Good afternoon. Welcome to the Charlie Mike webinar training series hosted by the National Veterans Small Business Coalition. Whoever's watching on YouTube, thank you for joining us today. I'd like to thank our sponsors, BAE Systems, Phillips North America, and Bank of America for making this webinar series possible. A few announcements. Uh, the NVSBC is part of the Community Navigator Pilot Program, which is sponsored by the SBA. So if you need anything from legal assistance to, to financial planning, to business planning, we have a whole bunch of resources for you. So contact the NVSBC and we'll connect you to the right source. Again, we're here for, at that time again for our annual conference, uh, Best 23. Registration is open. It will be at Al in Atlanta, Florida on May 22nd to 25th. Um, unfortunately, this will be my last conference. So uh, if you want to say goodbye to me or, you know, meet with other veteran business owners, learn how learn how to do business with the government. Uh, this is a place, best place to learn. You have light minded veteran business owners that will help you help you grow your business. So please come and join us in May and I hope to see you there. We also have our Fed, our Vet Fed Academy and DC networking dinner where we invite uh, compute, uh, specialists, uh, government uh, representatives to talk about how to gain opportunities with the federal government and also training on how to what network with the government. So those are the dates for our next couple of training and our dinners. So please join us at the Army Navy Country Club and meet with your federal business owners and learn how to grow your business. Again, this is our trial mic training. We have moved from doing a live webinar to a recorded webinar, and you add up the three questions for each topic we present. So ending from business planning, business operations, leadership, and federal opportunities. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel and hope you join us for our training mic webinar series. Again, I'm Earl Morgan. I am the program director for the NBSBC. Um, this is one of my last webinars I'll be doing for the NBSBC, as you know that I am retiring at the end of May. And I have been looking forward to this webinar because I'm into football season. And you see me do a, a lot of fancy football. That's one of my favorite seasons. Uh, another favorite season is the holiday season. You know, my wife and I, we get a Christmas tree. She does a lot of baking uh, cookies and give it to our neighbors. So when it comes to tax season, that's where I'm running hide. <laughs> I am a business owner myself, and I'm just learning about uh, the taxes that I have to do for this year. So this is perfect timing for our next speaker, Mark Jager. He is the VP of Tax Operations of Tax Act. So I'm sitting here learning from him. So I'm going to give this over to Mark. Um, like I said, I'm looking forward to this because I see his commercials on ESPN and Sports Channel. <laughs> so Mark, you could take it away. All right. Sounds great. Thank you very much, Earl. And and congrats on your retirement. And, and I'm really hoping for the Ooh. best for you and the things Hello. you have in the future. All right. So let's go ahead and jump right into small business taxes in 2023. So just the agenda, folks, to go through today, we're going to talk a little bit about business structure effectiveness, uh, what estimated uh, quarterly tax payments are about and what to do, uh, when to start paying yourself really overall, right? You, you want to make money as well and, and when's the right time to pay yourself, uh, employee considerations, filing your own tax return, and then the 2023 SMB tax rules to watch out for. So. Again, thank you for the warm introduction. My name is Mark Yeager, the Vice President of Tax Operations at Tax Act. I do lead the tax development group overall, along with our compliance teams at Tax Act overall. I've been doing it for 16 years. I think this picture of me on the right uh, makes me look a lot younger because I'll tell you, after these last few tax seasons uh, with COVID and everything else going on and all the new tax rules, I have definitely gotten a few more gray hairs than what's showing in that picture overall. Uh, I am a board member of our circuit group uh, that gets to meet with the IRS and, and, and other industry members 
uh, to work through things that could be impacting the tax system uh, overall. So uh, it's very enjoyable. Love working with the IRS. I know those uh, details could always be a little scary sometimes, but get to work with them. A lot of great people over there and really at the state agencies as it relates to uh, getting the tax filing season going each year. So let's talk a little bit about business structure and tax tax effect effectiveness. Sorry. Uh, so just business structure. What what is right for you overall? Right. You might have heard some different themes or some different names around like an LLC, a partnership, an S corporation, a C corporation, uh, also a sole proprietorship. Uh, generally speaking, uh, I like to look at it as the level uh, as to where you're at as a business. You know, if you're if you're just getting started with your business. Uh, usually a sole proprietorship or a single member LLC is the right way to start or potentially a multi-member LLC if you're working with different people. The the LLC really just gives you that that personal protection uh, from like, hey, this is these are my personal assets overall versus, hey, this is business uh, assets or business related, right? And it's kind of that curtain, that iron curtain that kind of establishes a difference between the business and your personal assets to make sure that Hey, if something did happen with the business, there's no way they can go after you from a personal standpoint. Um, so if, if if there is an opportunity to look for that protection, you know, that that single member LLC or just an LLC in general is a great way to go. Uh, a lot of people who maybe just start out, they don't really know whether uh, the business is going to be right for them or not, but they want to get started. You know, usually a sole proprietorship that you file with a Schedule C on your 1040 return is kind of the simplest way just to go ahead and get started. Um, now. As you graduate uh, with your business overall and you kind of start moving forward, uh, maybe you're looking for some third party investor opportunities, you want to take a loan out, uh, things of that nature. That That's really when you start getting into this uh, partnership, S corporation, C corporation uh, overall. So uh, again, the partnership standpoint, uh, it allows you to get multi-members into it, right? But you know, typically it may be a little bit harder to transfer those assets over should you go to sell the business someday. Uh, but it at least gets you lined up to, to be that potentially LLC uh, partnership member where you can start passing through the profits of your business from what you file as a form 1065 or a 1065 return, uh, where you, you enter all your income uh, and you distribute it to all the partners uh, that are in that business overall. Uh, so then nothing is taxed really at the partnership level. It passes through the partners where they'll report the income um, on their on their K1s uh, from a K1 on their on their 1040 tax return. So the S corporation standpoint, very similar, right? Pass through entity. Uh, it has some uh, uh, information again where you you distribute the income on the 1120 S return, and it flows through on a K1 to the shareholders uh, of a given business overall. So again, from that standpoint, there's a little bit of uh, structure around hey. You can only have so many shareholders in an S corporation, maybe as a disadvantage. Uh, a lot of them have to be, really have to be the US based, uh, no non resident uh, shareholders for it overall. Uh, but it is taxed once and it has that one taxation. A lot of times, what you'll find in this situation, which I know we'll talk about later, uh, is that people that are shareholders, especially majority shareholders that are operating in the business, may start paying themselves a, a W 2 during this standpoint. And then the C corporation uh, is really about just the business in general. There's nothing passed through. The, the, everything's taxed at the C corporation level. Uh, and since 2018, that tax rate is 21% overall. You know, the difference is, is you could have double taxation in play that once you get your, like take a distribution uh, or have income that comes from the C corporation, you would also uh, potentially pay for it uh, at the at the individual level as well. So. Each one of it has its advantages and disadvantages as it relates to investor opportunities um, and what, what makes it easier to bring in new funds, new investors, and, and things of that nature. So let's move to estimating quarterly tax payments overall. So this one's important in terms of specifically for those single member LLCs and for those sole proprietors on your 1040 return. So remember, for your single member LLCs and for your sole proprietors, your business is taxed on your personal return, on your 1040 return, typically by filing a Schedule C form. Now, some of you may have a, uh, this is like a side hustle job for you. This is more of a freelancer type work overall. So you may have an employee job that you're working for that you have withholdings taken out overall. 
Um, so ultimately, at the end of the day, what you're ultimately doing uh, as an employee, it's it's a pay as you go system, right? Your employer is withholding money from your paychecks and filing it on behalf of you uh, to the IRS and state agencies overall. And as a business, you're the business owner, you're involved with the business. You have to do that for yourself now, right? There is no employer making those payments for you overall. So a way to do that is by making quarterly estimated tax payments. So again, how you calculate uh, this amount overall, uh, right? It's really about your what you expect to your, uh, to your income to be for that year. As a sole proprietor, as a single member LLC, you can use your prior year's information uh, overall to ultimately pay what could either be 100% or 110% of your prior year tax liability. That's a good way to avoid underpayment penalties uh, from the IRS or the state agencies. But really that estimated tax really is equal to your expected adjusted gross income, your taxable income, obviously less uh, different types of deductions and credits uh, to get to what your final tax amount that you're trying to cover will be. There are different ways of doing it, right? You can, when you go to file your tax return each year, you can make quarterly estimated tax payments as part of the business filing overall, or you could make payments by mail online or via the IRS uh, to go app uh, to make those payments. Uh, and then also not to forget, they, there is an electronic federal tax payment system to do that as well. So the last question then is, okay, I know why I have to do it. I know how I have to do it, but when do I need to make these payments? So for normal calendar year filers, right? I'm not getting into fiscal year filers because that gets a little more uh, of a convoluted situation, but it's really divided amongst four payments and due dates. So it's April 18th for 2023, June 15th, September 15th, and January 16th of 2024. Th those are the four payments that you're trying to make for those given four quarters uh, to meet your obligations with the IRS and the state to try to avoid uh, any kind of uh, uh, compliance issues around underpayment penalties overall. So paying yourself, I know we touched on this one a little bit. There's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, and we're just providing some uh, examples here, right? The, the best solution here is always talk to a tax professional uh, or a lawyer to figure out what makes most sense for your business overall. But the first and foremost, the, the, the easiest, maybe simplest way to do things is really around your salary, right? This is cutting yourself a check through payroll process of withholding taxes, which really is legally required for S corporations and C corporations, right? Uh, from S corporations, it's 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 really nice. I, and I know a lot of individuals who do it this way where, right, the business is earning money. Uh, they're, they don't want to, they don't want to use up all the funds of the business, but you really have to pay yourself like a reasonable amount amount for that business. Where now, okay, they're they're maybe they're not paying themselves as much as they want to, but they're getting a W two from their business overall. That gives them some income, whether it's on a monthly basis, a biweekly basis, whatever it may be. That ultimately makes sense for the business. And right, right, the best part is is right, it's it's a it's a tax free distribution on the business side as it relates to your overall profit. Obviously, as a W two employee for that business, you're going to get a W two that you file on your personal return that you get taxed on as ordinary income. And then the rest of the income uh, will be taxed also as ordinary income um, on a different line of your 1040 tax return. Um, and it is right. It, it's it, uh, a draw. So that, that is salary uh, overall is what what happens there. A draw is really just a direct payment from the business to yourself. It, it's not consistent. You know, a lot of times this happens as a sole proprietorship uh, because they're, you're not an employee. You own the business. You can't really pay yourself in that regards. Uh, but as a draw, it's just, hey, I may take a, a draw from my checking account on February 15th, or I may take a draw on October 15th. Uh, it's going to be different on how that's taxed overall. Again, as a sole proprietor, you're taxed on all your income right away that you earn, right? So you have your, your gross income, last year deductions to ultimately equal your profit from the business. You're going to be taxed on that no matter what, even though maybe the income never received uh, for you in your personal return. Uh, so at the end of the day, you're being taxed on it up front. So when you go to take that distribution from the business, you're not taxed on it again. That's typically how it'll work from a sole proprietor, uh, even from a, a, an S corporation standpoint overall. Another option or another way to do things is around retirement funds. Some people may say, well, I don't think the paycheck's right for me. I don't really want to head down that right or that head down that route, or I don't want to take a draw. So another opportunity is really contribute to retirement funds. Uh, so there's a few different options on the screen talking about simple IRAs, uh, simplified employee pensions, and solo 401k contributions uh, overall that you can do. Again, 
these are tax deductible type events that you get to contribute uh, either to you or your employees uh, uh, retirement plans really overall. So it's a nice way to uh, lower your, your taxable income for the business. Uh, and then also it's right, it's great news for your employees and, and even for yourself that you're contributing uh, to your retirement plans overall. So uh, a simple IRA, you can contribute up to $15,500 plus a fixed 2% contribution or a 3% uh, matching contribution. The simplified employee pension, you can contribute up 25% of your net earnings. And then the solo 401k, you can make those annual salary deferrals up to $22,500. So again, which one makes the most sense for you and your business? That's going to be a question for your tax professional, your CPA um, to help you answer, but they're all options to help reduce your taxable income overall. And then lastly, health insurance, right? It's another one, very similar to retirement funds, right? Everybody needs health insurance or we should have health insurance. Uh, so you could get the health insurance through the marketplace, obviously through the, the federal or state agencies, or you can find private health insurance overall customized for you and, and your employees uh, overall. Uh, again, it's a great way to contribute. It's a great way to provide benefits for your employees and really for yourself as well. And it also can be written off from your income. So let's talk a little bit about employee tax considerations overall. So I want to hire an employee. What do I do? Hey, that's great, right? You're getting to the point where your business is growing, right? There's too much work for you to do individually, or you you just need help really to get this done overall. So there are th there are things you need to do to really bring on an employee, right? We we talked a little bit about it earlier that if you're an employee, right, your employer withholds FICA taxes, meaning Social Security and Medicare taxes. If they withhold W-4 taxes, you have to file a W-2 for your employee each year. And then we talked a little bit about the different benefit options that you may you know, promote as, as part of your business. So one of the early things you got to do, right, when, when you think about you onboarding as an employee in the past, in your past life, or maybe even today, is there's different things that you have to fill out and complete. You know, one of those could be a W-9 uh, form that really helps collect your uh, IT or your uh, ITIN, Social Security number, your TIN number is what I was trying to say, taxpayer identification number uh, that's needed for employment, right, in the United States. So we got to capture that information. So when you go to file your W-2, you have that information for them overall. You're probably going to have to set up some sort of payroll system. Uh, obviously, there's going to be some sort of, if it's one employee, maybe you do time cards because, uh, you know, uh, payroll systems could be expensive to implement. So you have some punch in, punch out, so time in, time out sort of uh, application that keeps track of employee hours overall. Um, so that's one that's one way of doing things right then and there. Uh, could be software out there, right? Maybe software is the easiest solution that you have people sign into and sign out of. It keeps track of their wages. It can file your quarterly uh, taxes for when you go to pay in uh, for the Social Security Medicare taxes that you withheld. As an employer, you also have to pay the other half of those Social Security and Medicare taxes withheld uh, as well for the employee. Uh, so there are more taxes you need to file outside of your normal business tax return. Uh, when you have employees on staff. The other things that we've talked about previous as well is just those self-employed retirement funds, self-employed health insurance. Hey, how are we going to get a health insurance plan set up? Does it make sense to go through some private insurer um, and, and complete those forms and provide that benefit package uh, to your employers? We talked about those three, three of those three examples of different options for retirement funds on the previous uh, screen overall. Um, what do I need to do to get that set up? Obviously, a, a lawyer, a tax professional will be able to help do that and ensure that you're meeting the compliance that is required um, in terms of if you're getting a benefit from retirement funds, you know, your employees should have a uh, need to have some sort of safe harbor matching uh, as it relates to uh, retirement benefits as well. Filing your own tax return. So we talked a little bit about, all right, well, yeah, there's different taxes you have to file, especially when you onboard employees, right? You got to make those uh, Social Security and Medicare taxes, the federal and state income tax withholdings. Could be sales tax uh, reporting that you have to do as well, obviously based off you uh, bringing in money for the business. There's, there's lots of taxes around things overall, but now we're getting specifically into, okay, forget all those taxes. That's all great, good, grand. I got that all taken care of. Now it's my own business return or it's my own personal return. So first and foremost, this is possible. Is this, is this something as a business owner I should even be jumping into? It's possible, right? It's always possible. It's, it's not overly uh, difficult, right? And, and I'm saying that obviously I'm a, I'm a tax professional here, guys. Uh, so maybe I'm a little biased around it uh, overall. 
but it definitely is possible to do. There, there's there's software out there for you to step through easily uh, to do like this SMB filing, whether it's a 1065, uh, 1120, or 1120S filing. The important thing to know is to be organized, right? You really have to be organized. You have to have your books in order to understand like what types of expenses you had for the year. Really, you need that anyway, right? Even if you're going to have a tax professional do it because they need that data. Um, if you have software that helps with your accounting records, obviously that makes it easier to import into your tax software uh, to complete your business taxes overall as well. And then if you are an S Corp or, or a, a partnership, right, you have obligations to try to get that done. Uh, well, by March 15th, uh, if, if there's always an extension, but by March 15th, because those those partners or those shareholders in that business are going to want their K-1s to file their personal returns as well. Um, so there is a little bit that goes into it. It's very similar to a, a 1040 or a personal return in terms of the process of completing a tax return overall. But it's definitely possible, especially if you're one who wants to dig into the details and, and are pretty organized uh, around your information overall. Again, how to get started, right? There's there You can do some researching uh, on different tax softwares out there like Tax Act uh, that provides opportunities for you to complete this overall. If it's just something you're not comfortable with, Right, there are opportunities to find local tax preparers. I know the IRS provides that information on their website about finding local tax preparers in your area. Talking to friends and family is a good way to get started as well to see, hey, is there a reputable um, CPA firm uh, in the area that can help file those taxes as well? But yes, uh, generally speaking, partnerships, S Corps, got to file the business return to get those K1s so people can file their personal tax returns. Obviously, from a C Corp standpoint, that just meets the, you pay the taxes with the C-Corp, uh, and then that meets your filing obligation. Nobody really needs anything from a personal standpoint for that one. Let's talk about tax rules, and this isn't necessarily for this tax year that, that that's being filed right now. This is gonna be about uh, this next tax season coming up. So this is, this is thinking about these things in the back of your mind to make sure you're meeting uh, your, uh, basically you're trying to reduce your tax liability, right, on, on a year-to-year -year basis. So first and foremost is this employee retention credit. This came about as part of COVID overall. It is starting to retire. You can see it can't necessarily be claimed on 2022 and returns beyond. The point we're trying to make here overall is that if, if you were eligible for this and you didn't get this, you really should consider filing an amended return in 2020 and 2021 during those COVID years because you may qualify for the credit, right? It was up to $7,000 per quarter per employee. Uh, overall, uh, again, it may be important to, to do a little research around it, talk to a tax professional, because it's not insignificant uh, option uh, during those years to, to get this credit. So if you didn't do it, that may be something to look into overall. Bonus depreciation. And, and when we talk about bonus depreciation, really any of these tax rules, folks, right, things change constantly. I think you all know that. Uh, the rules could change a month from now. The rules could change at the end of the year. Uh, but we're providing you the information that we know at this time. And one of those things that has always changed has been bonus depreciation. Right now, it's set to fall down to 80% uh, bonus depreciation in 2023, meaning that if you played it, placed an asset and service that qualifies for bonus depreciation, in the past, you could fully write it off, right? It's like, hey, this cost me $50,000. I'm going to go ahead and write off the full $50,000 amount, where now that 100% goes away, could come back, but it's going away and dropping down to 80% of what you could claim uh, for that asset placed in service. And then it's really going to drop an additional 20% each year after, again, unless Congress acts and does something from there. Uh, and then I touched on a little bit of what you could do on 100% bonus depreciation in the past, uh, and, and it would take an act of Congress to uh, implement further 100% uh, depreciation going forward. All right, let's talk a little bit about the employee retirement plan credit. So this is for businesses with up to 50 employees can claim a tax credit for 100% of the cost of starting a retirement plan up to $5,000. So this credit does phase out for businesses between uh, employees between 51 and 100 employees. So again, it's meant more for small businesses. Again, it's a great way. We talked a little bit about the different options of setting up a retirement plan earlier uh, on this chat. And it's just another option for you to, uh, to get a tax credit, to maybe get more of a refund if it's a C corporation, uh, just opportunities to offset your tax liability overall. Um, for your business. And then really the big news that, that kind of came out last year was around tax and energy efficient items uh, overall. So energy efficient commercial building deductions really allow small businesses to claim a larger deduction 
per square foot of renovations uh, per the qualifications. Uh, and that tax credit is up to $7,500 also for the purchase of an electric or fuel electric vehicle. So there are a lot of personal items uh, on your personal 1040 return that you can claim for energy efficient related items. But we want to be clear here that that's just not for people with their main homes and their personal homes as well. You can also get these types of deductions uh, for your business here going forward as part of some legislation that passed uh, this last year. So that's the presentation what I had for you all uh, today, and, and now I'm opening it up for some questions. Uh, so Earl, I, I'm going to pass it to you to see what types of questions I can help answer uh, today as well. OK, you just reminded me it's March 10th, so I have five days to get my taxes done. So if, if I, you're asked for a partnership, yeah, yeah. You could always file an extension, Earl, right? You can always do that, too. But yeah, you're, you're low on time. <laughs> I'm one of those procrastinators because I'm the type of guy that I'd be hit and send at 11.59 p.m. on tax day. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so Don't I'm going to have to stop doing that. <laughs> you're not the only one, Earl. You're not, you're not the only one. <laughs> okay. Um, the first question is from, actually, it's from Zach Armstrong. And he's our deputy executive director for the NBSBC. And he's also moderating uh, Charlie Mike, and he's been doing a superb job of covering for me this last couple of weeks. So uh, his question is, what are the differences between doing taxes as a government contractor as opposed to doing as, a, as opposed to a business that doesn't serve the federal government? Yeah, so. From a taxes standpoint, uh, it, uh, there actually really isn't a difference at all. Uh, from a setup with the federal government standpoint, is a little bit different, right? Like if you're going to try to get in with business with the federal government, I'm sure there's some more uh, hoops you have to go through to to be a person who can work right with the federal government overall. But as a business that either does work with the federal government or doesn't do work with the federal government, the process of you filing your tax return is the same. Again. Uh, if you're a sole proprietor, or single member LLC, you file a Schedule C and that income that you get overall and how that's reported to you, uh, if you're a contractor uh, or if they just send you invoices for the work that you did or you you send invoices and they pay it as part of the business, uh, that all just gets reported the same on whether it's a 1065, 1120, 1120S or on your Schedule C for the 1040 return overall. Um, so you shouldn't see any differences from that standpoint. The, the main thing is just getting set up uh, you know, you might find it's easier to to get in and start working with a nonprofit or a prof for profit company where the federal government may just have more rules in terms of the due diligence they have to do uh, to work with certain businesses. OK. Um, the next question. Is from Lisa Dean, she's with analysis and resolution LLC, and she writes, I'm a one person business registered as an LLC. What is the best path if I own my own home with several tax deductions? Can I contribute 66K if I make only slightly over that amount? Yeah, so that's uh, it's a good question. So I'm hearing it's a single member LLC return, which again, we talked about it earlier that this is similar to a sole proprietorship that you file a Schedule C that gets attached to your 1040 return. So I'm gonna break this one down a little bit because I heard uh, the home. So if we're working or your business is out of your home, your main home, there are tax deductions that you get uh, for operating your business out of your home. Yeah, the IRS does have this standard deduction calculation of, hey, if you have three up to 300 square feet of your home at $5 a square foot, you could get about $1,500 uh, of an expense or deduction on your taxes. You don't have to use a standard deduction. You can do this calculation yourself as well. Just the IRS is a little more stringent in terms of making sure that everything's right uh, on this 8829 form to do so. And then I think as it relates to the $66,000, $66, we're talking about a, a certain retirement plan contribution for 2023. Yeah, absolutely, right? You, you can you can absolutely make this. Um, obviously, it's limited to, to the amount of income or that you have from the business as well. Uh, but if you set up the proper retirement plans, uh, you can definitely make that contribution uh, to your retirement account. OK, um, she also had one other question. Uh, can you recommend literature 
to learn more about on tax information. <laughs> yeah, you know, what I always read up, uh, is, is the IRS uh, publications and, and regulations out there. I know it's a little bit more tax heavy speak, uh, but that's a great way to go. I, I will say that Tax Act has a tax resource center for as for small businesses. So always feel free to, to check out our uh, small business website on, on taxact.com uh, for some helpful tax content as well. Uh, but typically, those are probably the two best places, I would say, that that has some good information on on these different rules overall. OK, that's great. Our uh, next question is from Kim Leon from DITD Consultant LLC, and she has a simple question. LLC filing as S Corp, good, bad or indifferent? Uh, maybe <laughs> leaning towards good. Leaning towards good, right? I, I like the S corporation um, status ultimately overall. Uh, again, you're not that you're not for an LLC, but you're avoiding that double taxation. And then it just depends where you see your business going. Uh, if if you see this business kind of maintaining just steady, you know, low single digit growth, uh, you don't really have huge aspirations for investors uh, in the future, right? Uh, an LLC and, and filing that as a partnership or as if it's a single member one. Uh, on your on your Schedule C is just fine, but you know, generally speaking, if you see this business growing a lot and you'd like to pull in investors and, and more money, uh, I do like to see that S corporation side at least from from my preference. Okay. Um, next question. Actually, we got four questions from Casey Missile from Pre Venture Stage. Uh, his first question is, how can I properly plan my company and spending? to best serve me as a tax perspective? Yeah, well, yeah, that's some of the ideas we've talked about previously. So it's good to know, first and foremost, what you think you're expecting to grow uh, your business in terms of income or, or even what you're expecting to get from income for the year. Uh, and then it just depends how you think you need to use that income, right? And then the reason I'm going for that is, is maybe you're in a you're in a business that requires lots of expenditures right now. Like, hey, we're just getting started. We're in year two, year three, whatever it may be. And I really need to spend this money I'm making from the business and putting it directly back into the business, right? So your your expenditures, your assets that you're purchasing are gonna be your tax savings drivers, right? The other opportunity is, well, no, the business is doing good. We're, we're growing steadily. We're doing what we need to do. Uh, now it's just kind of a cash cow. You know, I don't know if anybody's heard that that terminology before, but you're just making money and you're just trying to figure out what the best place to do with it is. And then that's when you start going into those retirement uh, items, the health insurance, uh, the things that you can plow money into that helps not only invest in the business and your employees overall, but then also into your own personal wealth uh, as well, right? As you start getting towards retirement while saving on tax liability uh, overall. So uh, it's a it's a mixture of you know what types of assets can I acquire for the business that's going to be really useful and cost effective for you, um, and then what types of programs do you have that are not only going to make your your business uh, attractable to new talent someday, uh, but then also equitable for you um, as you go to leave or or retire someday. Okay, uh, follow up to that question: um, What personal expenses am I investing now? that I can charge off as a business expense? Yeah, so it could be a lot of things, right? If you, if you look at different things, I typically point to things, and I, I say this a lot, uh, though I know I haven't said it yet, is what is ordinary and necessary for your business, okay? If, if we're out spending a bunch of personal expenses um, on uh, taking care of my dog, and the dog really doesn't have anything ordinary and necessary for your business, that's not going to do your business any good in terms of, of write-offs and, and what you should have overall. Um, but if there are things that you need, whether it's education related, right? It could be that I need to go to conference uh, for my business to get a better understanding of this. Hey, we're going to trade shows and I'm traveling uh, to show off some of my products overall. Those types of expenses, I wouldn't look at them as personal expenses. I would look at those things as business expenses that are required. And then that's something I should be claiming as a deduction on my taxes each year. So you're basically saying, so I got all this gray hair on my goatee. So if I use hair coloring for my goatee and make it black and then I go to a business conference, I can't write that off? Uh, Earl, I, I think that, I don't think that's going to work. Now, 
Hey, if you're somebody who's on TV all the time, right? Maybe, <laughs> maybe you get into one of these awesome tax act commercials out there. Uh, yeah. Maybe then it, it could be required and, and ordinary and necessary. But yeah, yeah, for that for that trade show or or for that meeting, I don't think that's going to work out. Okay, okay, I'm just I I got to try. I got to I got to try to get rid of this. Yep. So um, his his uh, next question is: um, We are considering a DOD contracting company, but also have a rental property, and are considering a retail ice shave truck business to keep the kids busy. That's a good idea on the weekend. Do we really need to set up three separate businesses for each of these? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that one's, it's a, it's a good question. Um, there are three, it sounds like it's three completely different businesses overall, unless there's some overlap that you have between those two businesses. So generally speaking, I would say, unfortunately, yes, uh, you would. How you classify it could be different. Maybe maybe that uh, truck with the shaved ice is really a sole proprietor, right? You're, you're, you're just getting started with that one, right? You'd have to file a Schedule C for that one specifically. Maybe this other business that we talked about uh, with contract with DOD, that business is a little further along. That one has partners that we're doing a 1065 uh, partnership related on. Uh, but at the end of the day, if, if the work that's being done for the business is typically material different, materially different it will be different businesses but i'll always say in that situation because that's a very unique uh, situation that i'm hearing right here with this question that i you can always talk to a tax professional and a lawyer to figure out the best way to set up those businesses to see if we can reduce the amount of compliance right compliance with taxes uh, effort that you have to do on a year-to-year -year basis okay um and his last question is um is there a way co to consolidate to streamline their administrative burden. Yeah, for all of that, uh, yeah, um, I, I could see that. Uh, obviously, some of the things are similar. If, if there's tax software out there, again, I'll always say that, right? There's there's different taxes you have to file with employees to, to pay those uh, federal withholdings. There's sales taxes that you have to pay uh, on, it could be a monthly or quarterly basis uh, to, to file with the IRS so they get that sales tax revenue. Right, you have all this information. So the best way is to find different types of tax software or accounting software that can roll this all into one thing and then can ultimately file and 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 file these information returns, file your tax returns, uh, file those those quarterly payments of, of estimated tax payments, et cetera, um, for you to make this simpler. Because if you're doing this all manually, well, you, you're gonna be in for a pretty rough time. Okay. Um next question. Uh, this is a good one. Do you have tips on organizing your business and tax documents? Uh, yeah, yeah. So that, that, that is a great question. I, I am a proponent of Excel or some sort of uh, uh, SharePoint uh, document in a way where I can house all my documents. I'll, I'll take pictures of them. Um, I'll scan them. I, I don't scan as much anymore. I usually just take pictures of things. Uh, and then I can store them uh, in a folder on my computer, uh, for instance, or, or some sort of share drive where I can have all these receipts and documents and invoices out in one location. Uh, and then I can have some Excel file uh, where I categorize all my expenditures for a year, right? So the main thing with the IRS is they just want you to be consistent, right? Obviously, you shouldn't be claiming things you shouldn't claim or, or misreporting things that they don't want that. But if you're being consistent uh, at the end of the day with how you report things overall, you know, they're, they're good with that. Um, so I'll try to find out categories of expenses, uh, categories of income, things of that nature that I can lump in together. And then when I see those types of expenses that I'm paying for or uh, invoices maybe that I have going out, I'm just lumping all this stuff together where I can just see it in one spreadsheet uh, for totals for a month by month basis and then obviously an annual basis. Okay. And I think you already answered this question already. Um, can I file my own business tax return? Of course. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah of course. So again, it's going to depend on how you file it. If, if you're a sole proprietor, single member LLC, you're going to file a Schedule C on your 1040 personal return, right? Then there's a partnership product, which is the 1065. Uh, an S corporation product is the 1120S. And then as a C corp, you'd file an 1120. The 1120 and 1040 returns uh, are due April 18th. And then the 1065 1120s returns are due March uh, 15th here. I don't think there's. I don't think that falls on a weekend. 
Um, but nonetheless, if you need more time and all those products, you can file for extensions to get an extra six months to file. Okay. And uh, what types of business deductions should I consider when it comes to my taxes? Yeah, so we talked about some of them today. We talked about health insurance. We talked about contributions to retirement plans, right? And then depending on what your business does, right? There's a whole list of expenses around assets that you can claim. So I always think about things like your computer, your laptop, you have to have monitors, right? Typically there's no business that's getting away with not doing something on a computer. If you have a website, right? That's collecting fees uh, overall, you know, that that website you have, that that's deductible. Um, if you sell on things like eBay, uh, for instance, and you have shipping fees and other things of that nature, right? Right off those shipping fees. Um, vehicle expenses, right? If I need my vehicle to, to go buy things that I need, you, you can claim depreciation on that vehicle or, or you can claim standard mileage uh, for the businesses overall. Um, so it just depends on the business, depends on where you're at with the business. Uh, but look at anything that you buy. I'm going to go back to it. Ordinary, necessary for your business, you should be writing off. Okay, great. So Basically, what you're saying, I need to start my taxes now. And I'm going to hire you guys. <laughs> I'm definitely going to hire you guys. And speaking of, of using Tax Act, um, if, you're an, if you're an NBSBC member and you're watching this, this uh, recording right now, um, we have a partnership with Tax Act. Uh, you could save 25% by joining taxes and having them do your, do your taxes. So with Tax Act, they have a free live person you actually could call and there's somebody there to speak to and they have their um the returns are back with like 100k uh accuracy and maximum refund guarantee so if you want more information on tax act on our partner deal go to our website click on a link and it gives you all the information on how to deal with tax act and again like i said i'll probably be jumping on it as soon as the webinar is over so <laughs> so uh mark Oh, definitely. Thank you. I know you're busy over in Iowa with all that snow. So uh, yeah, <laughs> you still look yeah. young. You still look, there's no gray hair in your. I got gray. You don't. It's, here. it's, here. it's in the beard. It's in the beard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so thank you so much for doing this. Thank your team. They've been wonderful to work with. And everybody um, who's watching this, until then, go to Tax Act, get your taxes done, and I will see you or Zach at the next uh, Charlie Mike. Until now, everybody take care. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right.